tight ends, when I came into the game, were kind of an extension to the offensive tackle. They blocked most of the time. You know, I caught 12 passes my senior year in college. I would have played outside linebacker with any other team that would have drafted me. George Hallis had the vision to understand what a tight end could do. If he could get down the field, he would change the way you played defense. He would open up the wide receivers. I caught 58 passes my first year in pro ball and 12 touchdowns. It was a whole different concept. I think he was really at the forefront of, or right there was with the really the great tight ends in the NFL. Ditka was just a tough son of a gun. I mean, he seemed like he was made for the Bears. The Bears, they portrayed the things that I thought football was supposed to be. You take no prisoners. I always felt if you hit the guy more often than he hits you and you hit him harder than he hits you, eventually you're going to win the fight. No one wanted to mess with Iron Mike. I remember up in Cleveland where, uh, I mean, he got kind of formed, dirty shot, and a couple other people hit him, knocked him over, and uh, and he uh, he got up. He didn't appreciate the dirty shot, threw the ball on the ground, clenched his fist, turned around, punched this guy right through the face mask, and 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 nobody went after him after that. Mike Ditka's disregard for his body came with a price. After six years with the Bears and two with the Eagles, Iron Mike was headed for the scrap heap. But Tom Landry still saw value in the hard-scrabbled veteran. Tom Landry always said one of the best things that happened to us was being able to get Mike Ditka. We really needed that, that kind of leadership that Ditka brought. Dallas was one of the most talented teams in the league. But every time the Cowboys were on the brink of a championship, they let the title slip away. 71 season, we were expected to do a whole lot that year, and we got off to that, that shaky start being four and three, and it was kind of an ugly four and three. So to get focused again and get back on track, we had a team meeting. Mike got up, but he just talked about having the right people in the right place is important, but having the right people in the right places working together, you know, miracles happen. So people trusted him, and players respected him because he really walked the talk. It wasn't an accident. All of a sudden, these same human beings, we, we won 10 games in a row after that. The Cowboys rolled to Super Bowl VI, in which victory would redeem a franchise tormented by past playoff failures. Early in the game, we drove down, and we are on the five-yard line. We had a play-action pass that Dwayne Thomas did a swing, and Mike ran to the corner. I was still a little nervous, so I didn't look to Mike. I just threw the ball out to Dwayne, and he got hit, and we kicked the field goal, and we're coming off the field, and Dick is just chewing me out. Yeah, I was wide open. Why did you throw me the ball? And a few other things he said. <laughs> that, uh, and so I'm thinking, oh, geez, you know. Later on in the game, uh, I threw him a pass over the middle, and he dropped it. And I said, hey, nice catch, Mike. And he knew why I said that, because I would never say that. But after he chewed the heck out of me, I was, you know, I'm pretty competitive too. And I didn't want to mess around with Mike. I wasn't getting to fight with him. <laughs> and so we kind of, we bonded again. <laughs> Ditka made amends by catching the touchdown pass that secured the Cowboys' first championship. A fitting conclusion to a season he helped save. I think that winning that 71 Super Bowl and, and getting that momentum to become a team that could win the, the big game and win when it counted, Mike was a big part of that. We had a very successful 70s as far as Super Bowls. Mike was just instrumental in getting us to the point of being a Dallas team that wasn't going to back down to anybody.